Hello. Uh, before we can get started, this is actually programming uh, dance in Dancer, programming uh, creating a web application in Dancer. Uh, let's look around where the slides are that I'm going to use and how to install stuff. So you need to visit the website, which is called code-maven.com. That's my website uh, where I host all of my slides, including all the Perl uh, related slides. And uh, at the top of the slides, uh, top of the site, you will see a link called slides. And if your resolution is different or the fonts are bigger, then let's, and let's in this case, let me just enlarge it and then you can see it. So in this case, when the, uh, the fonts are bigger, <clears throat> then you probably have in the hamburger menu, you will have the, the slides. So you click on the slides. That's where you can find all of my slides, not only Perl, but Python and Go and whatever. And uh, you could go into the Py uh, Perl programming slides, but actually there is a separate section just for Dancer to make it easier to find. So you search for the word Dancer and then you will find it. And then that's how you get to the slides that we are going to use. In addition to the slides, I'm also going to use a couple of uh, um, live coding sessions. But um, I like to keep the, um, all of my examples on as uh, slides as well. Uh, it's going to be easier for you than to copy paste uh, stuff or just to follow uh, along the, the video. Now, as we go forward in the slides, uh, um, let, and, and the slides are just available all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter for everyone. Um, so the first thing is what we need to do is install Perl and have some editor and then install Dancer. Uh, let's get started with that. Uh, the first thing is installing Perl. So if you are using, and, and for this course, at this point, I'm going to assume that you're using Windows. Um, and later on, I'm going to show you examples how to install, how to get started uh, with Linux and probably also with Mac. Um, the setup is a slightly different, of course, there, uh, but the code basically is the same. So that's not different. And only the, the, the environment is slightly different. On Windows, uh, I'm going to show right now Strawberry Pearl. There's also Active Pearl that you can try to use. Um, I might create a separate video using Active Pearl as well. So you visit the website, and again, that's good idea if you follow the slides because then you have the link to the website. But if you don't, it's just called strawberrypearl.com, uh, where uh, the Perl distribution. This is the community edition of uh, of the Perl uh, window Perl distribution for Windows. And here you can uh, uh, grab the MSI installer. Uh, probably will pick one uh, the 64-bit version because that's most people. Uh, he have uh, on their computer. Uh, you can also get the, the zip version, but let's just go with the MSI version. And then uh, once you download it, you start it, uh, you install it, so you click through, uh, or you accept all the defaults, and that's fine. And once you are done, you can actually check whether you uh, you have installed uh, uh, Perl correctly. So for that, I'll start the um, uh, Windows PowerShell. You can also start uh, the CMD, and then I can type in Perl and minus V lowercase. And that will show you, it will show me on the command line that I have Perl version 5.32 installed. If you're watching this video later, you might have a newer version of Perl, uh, maybe even five, Perl 7, but uh, that should be the, uh, fine for this uh, course. Um, and if you have a slightly older version, 5.30 or 520 doesn't really matter. The core of the course doesn't uh, um, change with this with these versions. Uh, probably it's better to upgrade your your Perl anyway. So that's how you verify that you have managed to install the Perl. Then the other thing, the next thing that you need to do, um, actually I think I, I so that there is also something called the Perl uh, command line which, as I understand, is just basically opening the CMD. And then here you can also run type in Perl lowercase v um, and get the same in information. Actually, if you type in capital V, then you will get a lot more information about Perl that you're probably not, not interested in at this point. OK, so let's get back to the slides. Uh, the next thing is that to pick some kind of an editor. Here, I would say use any editor you'd you would like. Um, whatever you are familiar with, okay. So you can use uh, 
Notepad++, that's actually linked here because I like Notepad++ for in general editing for everything. And lately Visual Studio Code is also, that's, that's Microsoft Visual Studio Code, which is also a free IDE. Um, it's very popular among all kinds of programmers. I'm not sure how many Perl programmers use it or what kind of other editors Perl programmers use these days um, on Windows, for example. But that's definitely uh, something that you can try. So here again, you can visit uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, I trust you, you will find the download link. I mean, that's quite obvious. Download it and then install it. Uh, on the Notepad++, uh, let me just get back here. On Notepad++, it's a slightly less obvious in case that's what you're picking. Uh, you can have the download link and then uh, uh, you have all the ver versions here. So you pick the most recent one probably, and then you will have a click for for some reason, it, set, it offers me 32-bit by default, so probably you will want to go scroll down and get the 64-bit version, and uh, you usually most people will pick probably the installer, so this is the, um, it's an exe file as, as I see, and then you run it, and there too you basically accept all the defaults, and that's how you install the editor. I uh, personally inst installed Visual Studio Code, so I think I already installed it. Yes, it's already installed and uh, it's here. Okay, so what else do we need? One more thing, yeah, the slides and the examples. So as we go forward, let me just uh, quick jump ahead a little bit. So here there's going to be an example and there are lots of examples in the slides. And above the each example, you will find a link, uh, a file name, which is actually the the file that contains this source code. So the slides are created. I have some uh, marked, uh, markdown uh, text, uh, actually it's Marqua uh, or something like this, uh, and uh, examples separately. And why is it interesting to you? Because if you click on this link, then you will get to the actual source code of that file in GitHub. All of my slides, all the source of the all of my slides, all of my examples are on GitHub, so you can uh, fork it, you can send me patches, you can do whatever you like uh, with the examples. But especially uh, instead of copy pasting uh, from the slide, okay, which might uh, um, have some copy paste issues, uh, I encountered several times where the the quotation marks were copied incorrectly and so on, or white spaces were uh, incorrectly uh, uh, copied and then uh, then probably didn't like that. Um, all kind of various uh, strange characters enter there. So you might want to get here and then click on row. And that's where you get the. So from here, you actually get just the text of the, the files. Or alternatively, you might want to download the whole, all of that, all, all of the files. So back to the link where I had it. So uh, in the slides, one of the first slide is a link to all these pages. So this is the root of the GitHub project where I host my uh, all of my slides. And from here, you can uh, then, if you have uh, Git installed also, then you can clone it using this URL, or you can click on the link and download the zip file. And that's what I did. And uh, actually, for here, let me show you. So I opened the file explorer. If I manage to do that, yes, and um, downloads. So here are all my downloads, and uh, this is the zip file that I've downloaded, okay, from uh, uh, from GitHub. And uh, inst I mean, some I mean, you can click on it, and then you sort of enter it. But that's just uh, Windows. It takes a lot of time. It's just Windows showing you what the content is, which is not what we want here. What we would like here is to extract this file and that's uh, some people fall in this uh, this trap and uh, that's why I'm showing it here uh, so I cl right clicked on the, on this um, uh, um, icon and then say extract all and then it will offer you to extract in your home directory now for me for example my name is here I don't know how well it's, it can be seen because the fonts are a little bit small here on Windows um, 
but it has a space in, in it. And uh, if you're using some different language, I don't know, Hebrew, Arabic, uh, I don't know, Chinese, whatever, then you might have the, uh, your name in your own language. And then these are different characters. And um, it's probably better not to um, encounter issues uh, that uh, are related to these various things. Uh, uh, most uh, programming environment don't, don't really like uh, spaces and the, these uh, non-Latin characters, uh, especially in file names. So what I would suggest is that, well, let me let me cancel this for, for a second now, that first you create a directory where you're going to host all of your projects, all of your files. And uh, for now, um, because my username has a space in it, I don't want to be in the desktop environment or downloads or any anywhere anywhere like that. So instead of that, I open uh, a type in C uh, colon. It will show me what's in the C directory, in the, C, in the, in the root of my file system. And here I'm going to create a new folder. And uh, let's, uh, let's call it um, work or uh, yeah, let's just um, Let's call it course, okay? And then um, inside this course, I'm going to open the zip file. So everything is going to be in this directory. So I go back to the downloads directory, right click on the, um, on the image of the zip file, and then say, uh, select the extract all. And here I'll look for uh, the directory so I can browse with it. And then here I can again type in C colon, C colon, and then here I can sec select the course. And um, so this is the selected, select, I select the fo uh, folder. Actually, I think I need to select, I don't know, probably that's enough. And then I can select it and say extract. Okay, maybe I'll need to select a separate and su subdirectory, I'm not sure. Anyway, now this is extracting. So while it's doing it, it, its job, I don't really care. I mean, it's just, it'll, it'll, it'll do, do it. Uh, let me go back to the one of the windows that we have opened. So this is the one of the windows. And then I can type in, and let me also enlarge the font. You know what? I close this one. So I will only have one window because I don't want to mix uh, things up. And then I go and uh, enlarge the fonts. So I go to the properties. And uh, that's also good for you, but uh, it's definitely good for the recording for now. Yes, so I have the font slightly bigger now. And then I can type in Perl, minus capital M, dancer 2, and my dancer 2, and then minus E1. And this will tell me whether Dancer 2 is installed. So we are talking about Dancer, but actually there are two major versions of Dancer. Uh, Dancer 1, which is just called Dancer, uh, as that's the, the name of the, the module, and Dancer 2, which is the newer version, and that's what we are going to cover here. So when I say Dancer, I just actually mean Dancer 2. And what I did here is I ran Perl, I told it with the minus M uh, to load the module called Dancer 2, and then I gave it a little script, which is just the number one, so there's nothing in the, in the script. The minus E sa says just execute the following command. Um, and uh, just to show you, if I do it without the uh, minus M, then it will just run, it, will do, it won't do anything because this one it doesn't do anything. It just a valid, it's just a valid per program, so it won't complain. But the, in the previous command, when I ran per minus m dancer2, it was trying to load dancer2 into the memory, and it says it can't locate dancer2. Uh, and you will probably encounter many of these um, error messages uh, that you can't locate something in, at, in the at ink, and then it will say also you may need to install and then the name of the module. And in this case, there's no double clone it because it, the module has only a single uh, name, but um, other modules might, uh, so um, I don't know. Um, yeah, other, other modules might, will, will have uh, these double clones uh, there. 
so this means that you will have to install uh, um, Dancer 2. So let me go to the slides back. And um, there we're going to install uh, um, Dancer. So the next slide is installing, uh, installing Dancer. And here you have what you have here is that you uh, need to use CPAD M. Um, actually, because you're uh, using Strawberry Pearl, because I'm using Strawberry Pearl at this, in this uh, examples, CPAN M, which is the CPAN client, the, the more um, advanced, let's say, or, or newer CPAN client is already installed. So I don't need to install it. Uh, as you can see, this is what uh, it's usually Linux and, and Mac people will have to use it. So I'll just can go ahead and say, uh, type in CPAN M Dancer 2. And that's what I'm going to do. CPAN M Dancer 2. Dancer 2. And this will go ahead and download CPAN, uh, download the Dancer 2 from CPAN. CPAN is the repository where you can find all of the the modules, uh, the Perl modules, and it will go and install uh, Dancer on my system. Now let me just uh, check on, okay, so you can see it takes a lot of time to unzip that file, so don't worry if you it will take a lo long time. Um, that's what's going on. It has, I don't know, a couple of minutes already. And also the installation of, of, um, of uh, Dancer. So let me just explain what's going on here in the meantime. Uh, uh, CPANM goes to this website called CPAN, downloads Dancer 2 and then opens uh, the package and tries to install it. And it encounters that C uh, Dancer 2 is actually depend depends on various uh, dependencies, that is various dependencies, other packages. So it goes out and then tries to install those packages. And this does, it happens recursively. So it might uh, take quite a lot of time uh, till you get installed everything. And not only that it has to recursively install all of these uh, extra modules, but every time when you're installing a Perl module, Perl actually runs all the tests, that, all the unit tests that come with the module. In other languages, it doesn't really happen. Um, and it has advantages and disadvantages, of course. Uh, the big disadvantage is what you see is that it takes a lot of time, a lot more time to install stuff. Uh, the big advantage is that this actually checks whether your the current version of Dancer 2 that you're installing uh, works well with your current Perl, with all the stuff that you have already installed on this Perl on your operating system. So uh, by the time you installed, you know that um, you have a reasonably good chance that everything will work fine. If some something fails during the tests, you can actually tell uh, CPNM to install stuff without running the test or install them even if the test the tests failed but then i would but then one thing something might be broken okay um, obviously test failed um so when you're going to develop things something might be broken and then you will have you won't know if the the problem is in your code or something that uh, that was there already that's one thing. So I'm not sure that, that I would recommend that, especially if you're a beginner um, in Perl or in general. And the other thing is that um, what I would really recommend is to find that uh, error message and then report it uh, to the right channels, to the bug checking system of the specific modules and so on. Now I won't going to wait for this. I'm going to stop this video now. And in the next video, we're going to uh, check out what happened with the installation and how can we go on with the uh, development of uh, our Dancer application. So goodbye for now.